it's the first 90 degree day and man it's hot <laughs> i love it uh loving every minute of it you know that's kind of what grace is like loving every minute of it you know just dealing with it you know i mean it would be nice i guess for some people if we could say that there was something for you to do but you know it's kind of like i don't know if you've ever had somebody that was you know two thumbs or always left-handed that you know like maybe you were you know working on an engine or car block or something and you'd ask them for a tool and you'd say you want a phillips screwdriver and they'd give you a flathead you know what i mean you know or you'd ask them for you know a box in socket or something you know and they'd give you you know something else and they didn't know what they were doing and you know you just kind of went no not that one the other one you know and you just you know kept working with it and it never seemed to get it that's kind of what people do with religion you know it's like they really want to do something about grace because you see there's this whole idea that somehow if we teach grace people aren't going to live righteously because they think they're getting away with something because they don't expect God to intervene in your conscience people that worry about trying to add something to grace always try to influence people's conscience now they're not doing anything for God they're actually hindering the work of God they're kind of like the guy trying to help it's like can I help God really can I can I ha 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 no you can't I'm sorry you can't do anything to help God when it comes to his mercy being extended he chooses whom he wills and he loses whom he chooses if he wills to lose them <laughs> you get the picture sort of it's kind of like this yes by grace you are saved and that not of yourselves lest any man should boast but it is you know of the righteousness of God you know given and imputed to man through the death and atonement of Jesus Christ but you see we don't get to figure out who that goes to and that's where people seem to make the big mistake about grace just because we think we are saved or we are pretty confident that we're saved doesn't mean God can't change his mind folks <laughs> I mean he's God he could do anything he wants to just because your theology's off doesn't mean he's off it just means you're off oh that could be a problem oops so you see it's better to talk it over with God than it is to talk it over with men because whether a man tells you you're saved by righteousness or by working it out you could sweat and labor and try to put on some fancy clothes you know and act like you're saved because the blood of the lamb slain oh goody 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 it's been sprinkled it's been dashed it's been flashed it's been crashed all over the place you know it's like what a bloody mess and wind up in hell anyways I can really well who do you think gets to decide men or God it's your call dude get a grip it's not for men to decide how they get to heaven it's for God to decide who it is that gets to go in and who don't because you don't get to like stand up in court and you know like say hey I got I got my righteousness here you know I did all this stuff in your name I you know like cast out demons I like you know was doing this and doing that and I kind of went like this and I kind of went like that and then guess what you kind of went to hell well what happened I thought I understood this grace thing you see God never said that he would hold himself to something that would limit him nothing limits God let's be straight you're dealing with a holy God holy cow no holy God oh yeah sorry so when we start talking about grace you know we forget who we're talking about because grace isn't something that's you know you get a you get to believe in it and then all of a sudden it's something that makes God do something you got the wrong God you better go find religion because you're heading the wrong way uh oh you're kind of tied up you're bound up you know but what you find in grace is you find that you have a freedom to express yourself to God you have a joy to develop a personal relationship so that if he tells you to do something 
you don't feel so bad about obedience because you kind of go, well, yeah, you know, I guess I will. And then as you keep doing it, you know, you kind of want to and you love to and you enjoy it more. But if you get into this kind of like legalism and righteousness and think that you can do something, you know, to help God, or even if you don't use that reasoning, but somehow you're doing that anyways, I got it. I got kind of a word for you, you know, it's not going to work out so well because maybe you're heading the wrong way and you're hindering the work of God in your life and that if you're doing works of righteousness, you might be sacrificing something that you shouldn't be messing around with. And that's why we don't mess around with grace, we accept it as a gift from God, as something that He gives to us, not we earn ourselves. If our relationship with God depended upon being righteous and good, we would never make it. You mean it's not like Santa Claus? It's almost comical to see some people parade around in their rags. They sought around with their holier-than-thou, gaudy kind of religiosity, with a hyper-spiritual air about them. After all, we have the gift of tongues, and we have the gift of this, and we have the gift of that, and I'm an apostle, and I'm a prophet, and I'm a... I'm just a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> I don't know what you are, but... You know, if you've got a title, God help you. <laughs> you got to answer for that title. Maybe you should pick a different title. Sinner saved by grace. I like that title. I'll take that title. That's the title I want. Give me that title. I'll take that title. They talk in whispered tones because they think it sounds holy and righteous. They use King Jameth Englisheth and King Jameth Bibleeth because it is, after all, eth, the only holieth booketh that you can use in your life. Eth. Oh, please. It's the Holy Spirit. God can use any Bible, and He can use devotionals, and He can use the wind, and He could use a donkey, and He could use a jackass, and He could use, well, me. <laughs> Ooh. Boy, isn't that a shock. Someone like me? Huh. They speak with these, and they speak with thous, and are far more righteous than the yous and yours and yows. We see them puffed out in their righteousness, strutting around, showing off, and God shakes his head and says, Nope, filthy rags, sorry. If my relationship with God depended upon my righteousness and being righteous and good, I would never make it. I have failed. I have come short of the glory of God. The best that I can manage is when I'm having a good day, my biorhythms are right and everything is going well, really flowing, then I'm cool. Man, I'm really something. But even on my best days, God looks down and says, Eh, sinner, filthy rags. <laughs> my best efforts simply aren't good enough. Trying to keep the law only condemns me. For the true law deals with inward attitudes. Back when I labored under this standard of self-righteousness, I found I resented certain things that other people were doing. I became bitter against them. I realized that I hated certain people and that I was jealous and covetous of the things they owned and that they did. I noticed that I had violated my own code and wiped out my relationship with God. Nothing was left to do but to start all over again. Gee whiz, man, you mean they get to go and do those things, you know, and I can't? That's not fair. Unfortunately, just about that time, I would feel as though I was restoring a right relationship with God, something happened. I blew up and down and I went again. I would be forced to start climbing the ladder of good works all over again until I got to the rung where I finally felt like I could relate to God. No sooner would I reach that rung, however, than somebody would pull a stupid move on the freeway and I'd yell, Where did you get your driver's license, you idiot? And then the whole process starts all over again. I'd get pissed off. And of course, because it's my righteousness, then I failed. Because, after all, it's a, not by works of righteousness, which I have done, but according to His mercy, save me. But since I'm not accepting that kind of righteousness, I have to do something about me. 
I have to be holy. I have to be pure. I have to be the apostle. I have to be the prophet. I have to be the pastor. I have to be the king. I have to be the priest. I never fail, do I? I set myself up to fall because I don't have a standard to f catch me when I fall. So what happens to all these people that fail and fall and stumble and bumble and crumble? Well, you see, that's supposed to happen to them. Yeah, they're growing. You know, it's not for us as a mob to crucify them now. No, you pick them up, you dust them off, and you say, hey, you know, it's okay. You're not going to be any more righteous for not having fallen. And you're not going to be any more righteous for doing better. But because you're forgiven, you can forgive others. Now that you stumbled and fell, we like you a little better. You're not so puffed up. You're not so full of pride. You're not so haunty. You're not so Mr. Know-it-all. Well, I think I'm a know-it-all. And I do. I think I know it all. I know that all of you are sinners just like me. Yeah. There's a way to know it all. And I think all of you are living by grace just like me. Yeah. And I think all of you need to be forgiven just like me. And I think all of you need to have a personal relationship with God just like me. And I think all of you can't judge each other because, first of all, you don't even have a clue who each other is. <laughs> Oh, well, okay, maybe some of you still do. But you see, when you're judging each other, and you're picking and choosing, then you're losing. Because, again, you're setting up a standard of righteousness, not a standard of mercy, not an extension of grace. For with what grace you have received, that you give. You mean I gotta forgive that dude over there that's really screwed up? You know, that weirdo? You want grace? You gotta give it. You wanna get forgiven? You gotta forgive it. Oh, you gotta have a standard of forgiveness? You mean they have to come begging and crawling and, you know, two or three witnesses too, and they have to do some extra work, you know, because you picked out something out of the Bible and you said, well, they're not really asking forgiveness, you know, because after all, they're coming 49 times, you know. How many times do I have to forgive them, Jesus? 70 times 7? Well, as long as they do it the right way, I guess, maybe. Uh, I, 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 I don't think that's what he had in mind, you know. I think the idea of forgiveness and mercy is a part of grace. So when you give grace, you get grace, because it's grace for grace. Really complicated, I know kind of screws up the religiosity. It screws up everything except for grace with which you are saved. God help you, because he does.